Now let us discuss question number 11 that appeared in GS paper 3 of this year's mains examination. Now the question, it states that most of unemployment in India, it is structural in nature. And it also asks us to examine the methodologies which are adopted to estimate the number of unemployment in the economy. And it also asks us to suggest improvements in these methodologies. Now this question is a 15 marker question. So naturally you have to answer this question in 250 words. Now what is the theme that UPSC has picked this question from? Now GS paper 3 in its first topic it highlights Indian economy and issues relating to employment. Hence this very theme has been utilized by UPSC to frame this particular question. Now what is the possible reason for UPSC to ask this question? Now for the past few months, there have been debates in the newspaper which pertains around the type of methodologies that has been employed by government to estimate the number of people who are employed in an Indian economy. And around this debate, this particular question has been asked. Now whether this question is foundational or current based? Now the very nature of this question which relates to employment is a very static topic. However, the nature of this question is inclined towards current based affairs because you need to understand the number of methodologies and answer this question accordingly. Now what is the nature of this question? As this question, it asks us a very minute details about the number of methodologies and what are the various challenges that occurs in these methodologies. Hence, this question is difficult in nature. Also, a student needs to answer this question based on very quick thinking on his ability as he needs to understand what are the methodologies and dissect these methodologies so as to understand what are challenges in these very particular methodologies. Hence, this question is difficult in nature. Now, let us understand this question in a very straightforward three body format that is introduction, body and conclusion. Now to start our answer with an introduction, we need to understand what the first statement of this question is. As this statement, it states that, that the nature of unemployment in India, it is structural in nature. Hence, we need to address why is employment in India or rather unemployment in India structural in nature. Now, the nature of Indian employment is determined by various two causes. The first, that Indian economy, it has transitioned directly from an agricultural based economy to a more service oriented economy. And this transition, it bypasses the manufacturing sector and its development. Now we know that manufacturing sector has a key role in absorbing the agricultural workforce and with providing them with gainful employment. Hence, this transition, it has led to structural unemployment. Now, Indian economy, it has also witnessed some of structural weaknesses. The first of which is there is a lack of capital formation, mostly by private sector. And because of this lack of capital formation, it has led to structural weaknesses. Further, Indian economy also witnesses infrastructural bottlenecks and these bottlenecks, they also arise in current infrastructure utilization as well as creation of new infrastructure. Further, India also witnesses a high population growth and when this population has not been absorbed in productive agricultural or manufacturing sectors, it has led to structural unemployment in the country. Now, after we have addressed what should be the introduction of this answer, let us now move to what should constitute the body of this answer. Now, the body of this answer, it should address what are the methodologies which are adopted to estimate the number of unemployed people in the country. Now, PLFS, which is Periodic Labor Force Survey, it employs three methods to estimate the number of unemployed people in the country. The first method, it is termed as usual principal status, also known as, also abbreviated as UPS. And this methodology, it estimates the number of employment 
based on what the person is doing for the last past one year that is 365 days and for example if a person is employed for more than six months in a particular year this means that this person is constituted as an employed individual now the second methodology it is termed as usual principal status as well as subsidiary status and this methodology it computes that if a person who is employed for even more than 30 days for the past one year then this person is categorized as employed under usual principal and subsidiary status now the third methodology it is termed as current weekly status and as this name suggests this method it utilizes to estimate the number of people who were employed in the past seven days and this is a very liberal method to estimate the employment figures as even if a person is employed for more than one hour in a particular week then this person is categorized as an employed individuals now after we have dealt with these three methodologies let us now understand what are the weaknesses with respect to these three methodologies in general now the issues that are related to estimate the number of employed people in india it is first related with traditional definition that are employed with by these surveys as the definition of employed people it only determines the person who are actively looking for a job now this actively looking for job it can be constrained by our social or familial commitments and hence if i am unable to find a job because of my social or familial commitment then this survey will not count me as an unemployed person further traditional definitions they also ignore the unpaid work for example there are individuals who are involved in taking care of their loved ones and they can be their children or their elderly for also housewives who are employed in many productive work in their households they are not constituted as an employed person because they are not contributing to an economic activity and hence these traditional definitions they are not covered by such surveys also the second challenge it is related to limitations that are associated with usual principal status now this usual principal status it fails to take into account the number of cyclical nature of our indian employment for example a person who is involved in an agricultural work is not employed throughout the year and only finds himself work for a few months and for example if a person is unemployed for a period of 4 months then also this ups it categorizes this individual as an employed person hence by utilizing this method you are not able to take into account the seasonal nature of employment in our country also there are let us discuss the limitations which are related to common weekly status for example this common weekly status it does not take into account the non uniform labor demand in our country for example if you are not employed in a particular last week then also you'll categorized as an unemployed person despite the fact that you found your work in the last one month further indian economy it also witnesses disguised unemployment and this particular problem is very much prevalent in the agricultural sector of our country because this sector it employs more people than what is required for their productive work thereby this methodologies they also not take into account the nature of disguised employment further there are also regional variations in india for example there is a significant divide in employment opportunities in both rural and urban areas whereas different states in the country they have different levels of development thereby the nature of jobs that these states provide it also varies significantly across the country and this methodology it does not take into account the amount of regional variation that exists in india currently hence our suggestive improvements should take into account this limitation and suggest measures accordingly now let us discuss what should be these suggestive improvements
Now the first improvement it states with revising the definition of what constitutes an workforce. And for example, the Indian workforce it should also include people who are involved in care economy such as housewives etc. Further, we also need to take into account the role that social constraints they play in deciding whether a person should seek job or not. And if these social constraints they prevent people from finding work, then these people they also needs to be taken into account by making them constitute the number of unemployed people in the country. Further, as we have discussed that the nature of employment in a country is cyclical in nature. Hence, the surveys they should be conducted in multiple times a year. Thereby, they will be able to find out whether a person is employed in certain parts of the year or not. Also, we need to modify the current weekly status method, as only people who are able to find work for major part of a week, then only they can be categorized as employed people under this modified common weekly status methodology. hence by revising the definition of what constitutes a labor force making these surveys more frequent and multiple times a year and modifying the current weekly status we will be able to estimate correctly the number of unemployed people in our indian economy and only after we correctly estimate the number of people unemployed then only we can make policies which will favor more jobs as well as lead to inclusive growth and development of indian economy in general hence this was all for today's discussion of question 11th in gs paper 3 that appeared in mains this year